Motion to uh, approve the minutes. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Vote on this. Yes. Any discussion? Vote. Oh. One favor. Uh, unanimous. All right. Uh, financial statement. Hi. I'm Judy Gould. I'm from the Management Solution. Um, so I am better looking than Mark Chaplin. Chapulis. Nice. <laughs> um, older than Mark Jack was, that's for sure. Anyway, there's uh, groups of handouts uh, of uh, the financial reports that you uh, asked for, and um, the warrants are making the rounds. So, um, we've done some looking at uh, your monthly expenditure report, and um, overall, you look in pretty good shape. I don't see any lines that are really, you know, potentially jumping right off the off the page at me, there are some things that we um, do need to take a look at. Um, I also included, I under, uh, understood from Mark that um, you were looking for some uh, information on both the school choice revolving account as well as the um, early childhood account and where those uh, stand at this particular point in time um, with their budgets. And I think uh, the big thing that we'll need to take a look at particularly in the area of school choice and your regular budget is that staffing and who's coming out of which fund. And there may need to be some shifting of some folks from school choice back into the general fund um, just to make sure that school choice uh, is in a healthy place. So that's uh, something I'm going to be um, taking a good strong look at before the next uh, school committee meeting. So that way uh, we can uh, bring some recommendations to you around that. Yes. When you say to make sure that school choice is in a healthy mm -hmm. situation, what particularly are you referring to? Are you referring to the current year or are you referring to what balance will be available for uh, starting next year? Yeah, in terms of what would be available starting next year. Because yeah. that was our concern in this budget was that the way the numbers worked, uh, we were using essentially pretty close to everything that was available, which didn't leave you in a good situation for going into the next fiscal year. Right, and that's what we want to be mindful of, and I think we have to move along in the general budget to be able to absorb some of that, so we can move in a little good. better place. Good. So that's that's something that uh, over the next few weeks I'm going to be taking a, a good hard look at, and uh, making sure that, uh, you know, both the general fund and the school choice fund are, are, are healthy. So. Are these packets that you have here, are they the same thing you, you emailed out? Yes. Thank mm -hmm. you. So uh, same thing with early childhood. The early childhood uh, fund looks in very good shape. Uh, and uh, just looking at what was budgeted versus what cash you already have on hand, um, you're uh, well within uh, being able to cover what was budgeted to go against the early childhood fund. So that, that one looks in really good shape. So um, I would say that those uh, it's the school choice in the general fund that we really need to kind of take a close look at so that, uh, you know, again, we're making sure that everything's in, in good shape. So. A few questions on your report. Um, there was something we did, we've asked the last couple meetings about okay. an overall adjustment to the amount of the town appropriation and uh, it's like 31000 that uh, shows in column two at the bottom of the page. Six and also appears uh, on, in the detail on page three, about halfway down. And we, uh, Mark's response was, well, he'd look into it, and it didn't seem like that was correct because it was reducing the total amount of the town appropriation. And I'm wondering if you had a chance, or he's had a chance, or. Um, I did not know that was the question he had, so I went and write that down um, in terms of the town appropriation. And you can see what you're talking about at the bottom of page six. And page three was the other side. It arrives on page three about 60% of the way down. Okay. Yeah. And obviously, if that were to be true, then we'd be hurting real badly. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he, whatever, it'd be nice to get this resolved for sure. Okay. sure. Uh, next question was uh, the, the figure for subs on uh, mm -hmm. 
top of page three, or we got some long-term subs going on that are causing this to be, you know, it's being spent faster than, can't we keep that up for the whole year? Yeah, we've spent about 60% and we're a third of the way through, through the year. Um, so that has to do with a maternity leave and we also, um, uh, for student <coughs> support to help um, transition into the school year in a couple different areas in the building, we um, kept someone uh, sub on for a little bit of time. So is that a problem for the year or is this something that, well, I mean, maternity leave doesn't last forever, but I don't know whether it's, you know, uh, just a concern or it's just sort of, who knows? I, I think that's one of the unknowns each year. Um, that's, you know, staff illnesses that yeah. in whatever circumstances. So it's, um, Judy and I had touched base about that uh, earlier this week and or late last week. It's just something to be aware of. Okay. Um, for sure. We are keeping an eye on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and there was another item I think Mark was, we asked about that was the, uh, Salaries dealing with nature classrooms on page uh, four was eighteen hundred dollars shown now posted against the account that has no funds in it. So that's about a quarter of the way down on page four. I think, I think his response was, well, there doesn't seem to be a line item for it, it's going to have to come out of some place, and he'd sort of have a look, but mm -hmm. we should deal there, with it. There should be a line item for nature's classroom. Well, I don't know what the situation is, and yeah. I, you know, I can't remember because it's not something that's new. It's, so if you look, um, if you look uh, three, three or four lines down, uh, uh, 403, Right. Yeah. If I miss something there. Yeah. Just been charged to the wrong line. So we'll, we'll get that fixed. Okay. Yeah. So it, um, but the budget balance for that one is one forty-five. Yeah, but there's no money in that one to pay for right. it. There's only one hundred forty-five in that account. I mean, I'm not saying we have to resolve this now. I just like you to. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and those. Put those, that on your. Those put, are the things that I'm, I want to take a look at, in particular in the salary lines, just to make sure that again. Right. We've got everything covered that needs to be covered. So this is. Uh, right. Uh, um, on the to-do list for the next couple of weeks. And and the next one, just I'd like you to take a look at, would be on page five, would be the custodial. Where is this? Uh, it was custodial salaries. And it showed that we've paid over just over 50% of uh, uh, so far for the year, and that strikes me as needs to be checked. Um, well, and you're, you know, almost halfway to yeah. the year. So. I know, but yeah, we're not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So could you check that? Sure. Okay, and then um, uh, on page five, towards the bottom. Uh, there, where are we here, page five, um, there was a posting on this one of, this is for, uh, building general repairs, it's about, uh, seven lines from the bottom, and there was a posting of 7,500 expense for building repair, and I know there was an item in the last warrant that was for about five or five thousand dollars or something like that payable to Siemens that was for that's why we have this new line item for fifteen thousand dollars for building testing and security stuff and so on and it was supposed to go in there and I think it was just coded to go in the wrong uh, line item and it doesn't seem to have been corrected okay. so if you could check on that sure. and um, as far as the uh, custodial salaries are, are concerned you know, when we have um, someone out sick, you know, they're they're still getting paid for those hours. Um, but then the other custodian might need to um, add a few hours of overtime to um, make sure the the building's in work, work in order. Um, so that could be where the 
okay. uh, discrepancy is. I, again, I just I, I, I just want some, you know, yeah. for them to have a look and make sure, sure that there's not, you know, that we understand what's going on and if we have problems yeah. that we address them sooner sure. rather than later. Absolutely. Yeah, this is that time of the year when um, we go back and take a good Find things dive yep. and right. see okay. where we're at. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then one general thing, and that is that um, in your presentation here, if you go across the columns, the fourth column is current and the fifth column is year to date. Correct. And they're always the same because it's the current is picking up uh, not the most recent month, but the current is picking up the in this case the five year five months to date. Mm -hmm. Now when we were getting reports last year it would pick up in that column would be something that was called range to date mm -hmm. and it was only picking up the one month so you could see what we'd added in that month. Mm -hmm. In this case it's like sort of less useful because columns four and five are exactly the same all the way down. So can you check on that? Sure. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Uh, public comment. Ben, I don't know if this would be a good time to mention. Uh, yeah. Sure. Um, so earlier, earlier this fall, one of our Sunderland community members passed away, uh, Guillermo Kohler. Guillermo was a Sunderland resident. Um, who did not have any uh, kids, but was deeply invested in our community and school. Um, he was someone that uh, devoted his life to helping others, whether it was through um, helping organizations run more efficiently, um, doing consulting work, um, or volunteering his time at Sunderland Elementary School, where he served on the school council. Um, he assisted on the school council. He helped with numerous projects um, around the school, including mural design, and um, was the mastermind behind our beautiful perennial garden out back. Um, so I put um, you know a little tribute to him in the Sunderland Sentinel earlier in the year, and I just want to uh, read a, a few lines from it. Guillermo was an exceptional artist. In fact, hanging on the wall outside of our front office, you will find a piece of Guillermo's work featuring the Connecticut River as viewed from atop of Mount Sugarloaf. The last time I crossed paths with Guillermo was at our town meeting this past April. He provided our community members with an inspirational speech where he helped to advocate for our school's early childhood playground project. His efforts helped to secure seed funding for the project, which is now in full swing. Although this amazing man has left us too early, his legacy will long endure. He was a selfless individual, someone who always gave more of himself than could ever be expected to be returned. He made the lives of those around him better. When we do in fact cut the ribbon on our new playground, we like to think that the smiles on the faces of our students are saying, thank you, Guillermo. Um, he, was a, he was a special person and I had a uh, chance to um, speak with his widow, Dale, Dale Schwartz, and um, we're, we're planning a, a tribute da down the road. Um, the first being our um, Arts Night celebration, which is coming up later in the year, and we plan on dedicating that night to him. So, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Bye for the minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, unfinished business. Update on the playground. This past. Uh, Friday, last Friday evening, we, um, uh, myself, Peter, and met with um, members of the playground committee, um, including um, some town stakeholders, um, a local carpenter, um, a selectman, um, members of the, a member of the CPA committee, um, a couple parents as well, and. We we had a we received the final concept from Berkshire Design Group in early November with the playground totaling around four hundred eleven thousand dollars, which is very expensive. 
Um, however, we hope to significantly reduce the cost um, through grants and um, labor. Um, so right now, we're in the process of going through the line by line components of, of the quote and see, figuring out where we can um, save money. The part, a big portion of the cost of the playground is the safety surface. And starting January 1st, 2019, there will be new regulations um, coming from the state as far as what is an ADA compliant surface. Just so happens that the town is um, working with uh, the local ADA chapter and applying for a grant. And we had a, another meeting with um, from all the departments in town earlier this fall. And so we will find out about that grant sometime in 2020. Is that correct, Peter? What is it sounded like it wasn't going to be. It was not going to be immediate. 2019. It was not going to be, but. Um, sometime in the first half of 2020. Um, and that would go towards the, the poured, um, poured surface and uh, playground mulch that are, that are included in the design. Uh, we've also started reaching out to local organizations um, uh, and have had varying levels of success. So it's, it's a big project that um, we'll need some time to complete. Um, but the ball's definitely moving in the right direction with it. Uh, this past spring with the CPA, we, we had said that this grant, this project was really going to come from fundraising and grants. Um, and that's still going to be the case. Um, uh, town selectman, uh, the representative from the CPA, did say we should put it on the CPA uh, committee's radar for something down the road. Um, and, but it was, we all agreed that we'd feel more comfortable doing that um, once we had shown everyone that we made um, efforts in raising money elsewhere. So that's where we're at. Outstanding. Yeah. Did, did you, uh, uh land on one of those designs that you'd showed previously or, or yeah still? and and the third the last design was was tweaked mm -hmm. um and the specific um play structures that were quoted um are, ve are very high um so we're not you know married to any of those okay. um and so there's definitely areas that we can um can, we can tweak and we have the town support um, through the highway department to do any work and removal of the old fencing and the old structures. It's just a matter of lining everything up. Um, I've already been in contact with uh, Do So Trucking and they'll help out with um, in one way or another. Uh, All States Materials Group um, who sponsors the Pound the Pavement Road Race each June um, has said they would like to help out as well. Um, and once we get a, a final number of, um, as far as um, pavement um, and the biking path on that, we'll, we'll go to them and see what, see what they can do. Outstanding. Yeah. All right. Building maintenance update. Bob Lesko, uh, Director of School Facilities. And I'll keep it around to everybody. Um, <coughs> here, somewhere. It's disappeared. There, there we are. All right. Uh, <coughs> both or you? Yeah. Yes, there you go. Mm -hmm. There's two handouts, um, and I, <clears throat> after meeting with Darius, I set them up um, in a way that we both thought would kind of improve what I had put out previously. The second sheet that says recently completed projects is just something, Darius asked me to look at some of the bigger things that we've done in the last year or two, 
and just put them down somewhere for your reference. Um, if you have any questions on any of those projects, I'd be glad to answer them. The numbers aren't precise. They're kind of rounded off to just generally what we spent. But I just wanted to show that. Um, the other sheet with the colored columns on it um, is a sheet that I put out last year too. Um, what I did this year <coughs> is I upgraded it and took the things off it that were already done. Um, and I put numbers in next to the projects that are the highest priority, the, the ones that really should be done quickly. And I also tried to integrate the, um, the work, the, the uh, Roy Brown Architects study that the town had done. Um, if you look in the left-hand corner, mm -hmm. in, in the left -hand, very left-hand column, you'll see numbers that, that coincide with the numbers in that Roy Brown study. Um, some of my numbers don't precisely match um, their numbers, and there's a list of projects on the bottom mm -hmm. that are things that they caught that weren't on my list. Um, most of those are some pretty simple general maintenance things that um, they came through with another eye and picked up some things that I didn't pick up. Um, so basically, I think the thing I want to talk about the most is those projects in the top that are in red are projects that I see as high priority, but they're also, they represent things um, that I've discussed with Ben and with the custodians here and there's some of the things that really need to be done the most and they're probably a greater group of projects than would get funded just this year so I tried to list those in what I consider a list of priorities. Um, the very first project on there that, that says exterior siding repairs is the trim all around the building and we've had some issues with that blowing off in the wind. Um, the detail that was done there with the siding on the building had just a, a horrible flashing and there's a substantial portion, there's, there's substantial rot there but it's completely, it's a nailer, it's not structural at all. But if we don't get that fixed we're going to have that stuff blowing off every year and it, it just it, people I get a lot of concern from the community when sections of that come off especially you know they they look at it they see it blowing off they see the rot under it and they're very concerned about it so I've had a contractor working on the building this fall um, we did a project in the back um, that was funded through the town um, through, through their insurance where a good deal of flashing blew off the gable end of the building and we had that redone just a couple of weeks ago. Um, the contractor that did that did a really nice detail where he replaced the siding that we have, the vinyl siding, with an AZEC trim material. Um, it blends in perfect, it looks really good and it's structural compared to what we had, so it'll last a long time. And that's generally what the plan is um, to do with that exterior siding. I did put a kind of a side number there that the entire project, if I add up all the estimates I got, is 17,500. And I would recommend doing as much of it at one time as we can but what really just absolutely has to be done, in, in, in my opinion, is $12,000 of it. Um, the next item on the list is some exterior door repairs. Um, we've had a couple of doors to the outside of the building that haven't latched, latched well and have given us problems where we can't secure the building. I recently had a uh, New England door closer in to do some repairs and they said the doors themselves are pretty good and it's not a wholesale hardware thing they can they can fix it for a reasonable amount of money 
um, I stuck a small amount of money in to deal with some of the recommendations that came out of the uh, air quality assessment that was done recently in the building. They wanted us to tear up some carpeting and, and replace some ceiling tiles and some other water damage things. Um, the next item is a, temper, a tempering pump uh, for the boilers. We've had several boilers, um, the sections in the boilers um, crack. Um, it's just the way the, the way the building is piped they get occasionally they get cold water coming back to the boiler and that's caused us to have cracked sections in the boiler at least i believe the one that we're about to fix now is at least the third section that we've had crack in those boilers in the 10 years that i've been here so this last section when it was submitted to the insurance company um, was submitted with a tempering pump for that one boiler so all we have left um, to protect the second boiler is this smaller project. Um, I've put a number in here. In, in most of the schools, what I'm trying to get happening is to get carpeting out of the classrooms and replace it with, with vinyl, tie, vinyl flooring. And a number that seems to work well in the schools is to do about three classrooms a year and they average in the area of $6,000 a piece. So I put a chunk of money in for that. Um, the next one, clean paint the boiler room. Um, it might seem like an unusual project, but um, we just recently did a project in there where we replaced the hot water heater that was in there. It was a big giant dinosaur of a piece of equipment. Um, we reclaimed a bunch of real estate in that boiler room it's giving us some room to move around and get things organized. Um, that project was messy. Um, plus, the boiler room has always been just, it's, it, it's not a good, clean environment. Um, and it, it's not something where I can just send somebody in there with a pressure washer. I need somebody to go in there that understands what they're working with and doesn't damage the equipment or hurt themselves. And then I'd like to get the flooring, the, fl the floor painted um, with a two-part epoxy and just get that mechanical room cleaned up. I really think that's a good project. And some of the project when we did the hot water heater spilled out into the corridor there, there's some stains on the floor tile there. I want to get that cleaned up. So. The oil tank stuff is, is just some safety things that should get done. You know, we, we've done some, we're about during this next break to do some work in the, in the boiler room. We're going to replace the oil lines, which through condensation have gotten pretty corroded. Um, and we're also doing a temporary repair of the, to the uh, tank gauge. So we're, we're getting some stuff done there, but we need to have, we've got a large underground oil tank here. Um, that's a big issue and represents a liability for the school. Um, we wanna have a tank inspection done. Um, we wanna do some uh, updating of the area where the delivery comes where we've got spill protection and we want to upgrade the manhole. Um, the next item is just a continuation. We did a project um, last year where we put about $6,000 worth of new blinds in the classrooms. There's about $3,000 more to finish that up and that's a good project that Ben would like to see done. Um, we've got a bunch of door closers in the building that need to be rebuilt. Um, the next item, and I'm not sure this is the best place to put it, but you know, it, it's again, it's something that came from the, uh, the, study, the air quality assessment that we had done and, and they're suggesting um, that we do a better job of cleaning the carpets every year. And I personally think the better way to do that <coughs> is to hire a vendor to come in and do it but it's something we can talk about. 
and then I've got a number for miscellaneous painting. Um, again, I don't know that this this whole list is something that can be funded, and you know, when I get some feedback from this group and, and Ben, we'll ask the town for um, some capital projects to cover some of this, and then historically, some of these projects get funded with um, fiscal, you know, when we have funds left at the, the end of the fiscal year. Beyond that, I'm not going to go through the whole list, but if anybody has any questions about some of the work that we did, or any of these projects, or any of the stuff that was looked at in the, in the study that the town had done, I'd be glad to answer them. Yes. Um, I've been the committee's rep to the town capital planning committee, mm -hmm. and you came last year along with Ben and um, when we requested money for the hot water heater replacement and the security cameras. Uh, that process is gearing up to happen again, mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, requests from various town departments, including the school, is uh, are due by, I think it's January 7th or 8th or something like that. And the rules are that they are to be capital projects, and by capital projects they mean generally stuff that costs at least 10 grand mm -hmm. and is going to last for 10 years. And uh, so there's, you know, obviously it's in our interest and, I, and, 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 and in the town's interest too to, to take a, you know, make a submission of highest priority stuff that we've got to go in there and that sort of needs to be decided pretty soon here. Uh, I'm not saying that if something changed, you know, at our next meeting after we'd already submitted something, we couldn't go back in and say, well, hold it, something's come up and we want to change our submission. I'm sure, you know, they wouldn't, that would be, that would be okay, but we want to play by the rules that they've set. And in terms of getting our initial submission in, uh, and, the, and the initial, and the submission is supposed to be uh, both the particular project or projects that you're asking for funding for this coming year and also a three to five year plan, you know, which, bingo, that's, you know, we're, you, you've done all that work and so on. So just a question of uh, picking, you know, what possible things are, again, the constraints being that it's capital and it's not just sort of repairs. So, you know, a number of these things are clearly just repairs. And secondly, that, that there's a, you know, ten thousand dollars is sort of the bottom line, a lower lower limit because under that it's sort of like, well, maybe you should be dealing with that stuff within your own budget or, you know, whatever. But so, you know, and there was one case last year where the library had about three different things that they combined to get it over the ten thousand dollar limit, and it was considered to be okay. These are all dealing with the building envelope, and so they could be a case could be made or a case was made that that's an acceptable project. Um, but so I don't know whether you, uh, so we really need to have the discussion now as to it's, what we want to submit. So just, that's why we're here. Right. So, so that's why Bob is here to talk about. Right. So what would your, what would your suggestion be to actually <laughs> well, submit to that? For sure. I, I think that first project of the exterior siding work does meet the, the description of a capital repair. Because, because it will last long enough. Yes. Okay. So I, I think that's one that I definitely would put in there. Um, beyond that, um, there's probably some projects that have to do with the boiler room where we could combine a couple of projects. Um, there's a project just off the one year list, um, which is window replacement. It's something that you know Ben and I had a discussion about today. That's going to be a larger project. That's probably going to be a seventy or eighty thousand dollar project. Um, I can try to work that number up a little tighter um, in time for the uh, capital process. If that's something that this group deems a good project, um, I believe there, there's a lighting project that. that, that excuse me fell on my list and on the energy committee's list, I think they're going to the town with that. 
Um, I was surprised by the number um, in the town study on the LED lighting. They had a number of about $200,000. Uh, the number that the Energy Committee put together um, with a vendor that they bought in is probably a $50,000 project with twenty dollars or $30,000 worth of funding um, from the utility. So they're going to be looking for $20,000 to do that project, and I think it's a great project. Um, but I don't, I, I'll talk with them. I don't, I don't think this is the right time, place, process to submit something like that. Yes. And likewise, the one you said with the windows, you know, one can always, one can always submit stuff even realizing that it might not get mm -hmm. uh, approved the first time around, but just to get it on people's radar. Okay, yeah, I can I do that. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones that are bigger. One of the things that we're eventually going to have to, you know, the we've done a ton of work on the boilers in this building um, through the insurance company and through these pumps, but the bottom line is the boilers um, in this building are older cast iron sectional boilers. They're not horribly efficient. Um, it, it really in the not too distant future, I would say the next three to five years, or as soon as possible, it would be really prudent to, to look at a project. The boilers in this particular building are similar to many of the other schools where we've got two large boilers. Either one of the two can pretty much handle the school. So what we've suggested, and a project was approved um, with some funding, I believe, from Green Communities, in Deerfield, um, where they're 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 going to replace a boiler. Um, you know, basically, the way to do it is to keep one of the old boilers because these old cast iron sectional boilers tend to last forever. They're just very inefficient. So what we're doing in Deerfield, and I think it's a great project, is we're going to put two smaller modular boilers in place of one of the one of the two bigger old cast iron sectional boilers. That'll give us some real high efficiency by having a good turn down and being able to run one smaller boiler and then bring on the second one. Um, and it gives us a little additional backup too. So at some point, um, either this year or next year, you know the the number that I have in here now comes from some some general consulting studies we had done here in the building. Um, but they had actually, they were suggesting three small boilers to replace one of the big ones. And they had a number there of about $130,000. Um, uh, I got a couple questions, yeah. Um, I'm not totally familiar with it. What is the town's commitment to the projects identified with the numbers on the Roy Brown study? I don't. Do we know I'm not sure if the town has any commitment. They're just the, they're, they're the town. The process at this point is that uh, at the last meeting they were, you know, basically it's, it's you know, I mean they got a, a spreadsheet that it's sort of like okay, taking all the buildings and all you know what number of years it's going to be and trying to plug in all the projects and figure out okay how much does it mean each year that you we got to come up with capital spending, so on and that was just sort of first pass at that was what was shown at our meeting like a week ago. Right. Okay, um, I don't think it's worth at that point. At this point, it's not anything close enough to being finished to say, okay, let's pass it around here and, you know, see where we fit in. I just, you know, I'm just making sure the school's at the table, the mm -hmm. school's part of all this stuff, and that we've got, you know, both visibility and we've got basically everybody realizing that the school's got to be taken care of, so nobody's just going to say, you know, you guys fix it. Okay, it's a town, it's a town, rightfully so, it's a town problem, okay. Um, but I don't know, you know, on this one, I think, um, I think the lighting thing strikes me as something that maybe is going to get dealt with by, you know, a little more town-wide sort of thing. Um, I think, you know, I mean, it might be worth putting in the windows project just to get it out there even though it may be more than they're willing to swallow okay we ought to have uh we ought to have details on it okay so it's 
you know, there. Even if they turn it down, it's there and then it's there for the next year. Okay. Um, I would think we would want to have, is this siding thing, is this take care of the whole building or is that just part of it, what you've got here, the very first item? The 17K as opposed to the 12. Would that, would that, do, would that do all the problems? is what we really want to do. Okay, and is any, what you did that was flashing, mm -hmm. okay, that was basically covered by insurance, correct? Yes. Is there any possibility of insurance covering any more of this? I don't see it happening. No. Okay. What, what happened with the flashing, flashing is the wind blew it off the building. Okay. What's going on around the perimeter it of the just, building is you had, those, is rock. you had that picture for those who don't understand yeah. if it's, um, that you showed me. I just, it just, it's a visual one if you right. haven't, if you're talking flashing and you think it's, it's not, an inappropriate this, thing that happens. The, the, this, is the, this is the trim piece <coughs> here around the building. It, it, it's very prominent and you can see it, but that's the nailer board that's behind it. it, it you can just take handfuls of it out. <laughs> Really, and, and what happened is when the siding was put on this building, there's a flashing detail right here that is pretty much non-existent. It, it never should have been done that way. But I thought that's pretty good. We got insurance to cover the yeah. current bunch. Because the wind blew it off. Whatever, it no, no. cost us 8500 it cost us 1000 right? <laughs> good. It, yeah. 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 It's just not Wind's a, well. We can pretty good out no, here right now. We, go yeah. through loosen it up. Maybe we should go <laughs> check on how it's doing. Um, <laughs> I, have a, I have a question on here. With two different um, line items for the for the doors. The miscellaneous exterior door repairs for twenty seven fifty, and then um, where's the other one? Uh, door uh, repair door closures partial fifteen hundred. Um, we always seem to be having door issues, um, whether it's there's a gap between the double doors and it's letting in cold air, um, or the, the door is not closing properly. And I know that at Frontier, um, there's been talk about putting in a key fob system. Yep, actually, it's one of it's somewhere down along in somewhere in this, I've also. I've got it. I don't have a number on it yet, but very much. And you know, the the concern I have is that th this is something that's always coming up, and the doors are not closing properly. Um, and so, for like a building security, and you think about like an internal and, quote for yeah, and just a, 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 a safety like standpoint. Yeah. you know, you have someone just run it's outside at the end of the day, the and the door doesn't close all the way, and then the building's open, um, and it happens. I mean, it, it happens routinely, so, and we're in constant communication about this, yeah. I can, I can get pricing for the primary front doors out here, which would be a good place to start. Mm -hmm. That's probably um, where the, the card access system would go and maybe this set of doors. You know, we could pick two very primary set of doors and have them redo the entire enclosure. And the, the doors that um, typically are not closing properly are, are not the ones in the front of the building. It's more towards the back and the side where, mm -hmm. you know, kids are going outside for recess. <clears throat> yeah. I've had New England door closers look at the doors several times, and I've asked them, mm -hmm. you know, are these enclosures that they feel strongly that we ought to get redone? And the feedback I'm getting is, is no, they just need ongoing maintenance and upgrades. But if, you know, again, we, we've done a couple of openings. We did some openings mm -hmm. back by the cafeteria and the kitchen and, and into the area that David and, and we replaced the entire door frame. Because that does happen, you know. Mm -hmm. The hardware is a function mm -hmm. of ongoing maintenance and it's also a function of how well the door fits in the opening and structurally this building's a little different than some of our buildings where the the framing can present out its own issues so yeah, i could i could if we wanted to i could try to get some numbers to do a couple of you know it's going to be very expensive but we could do a couple of total openings um, are there any grants for stuff like that i wonder like in terms of the uh like improved 
efficiency of, of doors that now compared to the ones in terms of... Usually when people are talking about efficiency for energy on the doors, they want to give you a couple of bucks for weather stripping and that sort of thing, not, not an entire door. For real, yeah. You know, basically what we've done in the high school is we've picked some of the primary openings that have just gotten worn down um, from a lot from time and we've totally replaced an opening. We've done that in a couple of locations in Deerfield Elementary. So, What's yes. the ballpark on that? Pardon me? Do you have like a ballpark on doing something like that? Or even just like a double door set? Like the, the yeah, you're, you're probably talking fifteen to $20,000 for a double door set like that. That, and that's that's a guess off the top of yeah, my head because yeah, yeah. everything's different. You sure. know, the 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 doors in Deerfield are, are set in a brick opening. Here you've got wood framing with a metal door, so it, it's something that yeah I can try to. Yeah. If if there's a real interest to try to get it funded, I can get pricing on a couple of complete openings. How does it? How's it after repairs? I mean, does it seem like? I mean. I, get the, like you repair one and then of course the next one <laughs> goes, but like do they, once they get repaired, do they seem to, then does that seem to last? Uh, Temporarily. Yeah. So the same doors wind up being a problem not too yeah. distant future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I mean, that's, that's a basic kind of security. It, it, is a, it, it worries me a little bit that we're hearing, no, these doors are fine. In terms of, I would hate to replace them, invest that money, and get doors that are sim like you, you still have the issue, <laughs> right? Um, so now on top of that, and what Ben's thinking is he wants, you know, to speak for you, Ben. Ben wants a key fob system, like what other the other schools are yeah. starting to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it'd probably be good to see how it unrolls at Frontier and Deerfield. We're in the middle of the project now and hope to have it completed by, by, by the time snow comes off the ground in the spring, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, they're supposed to kind of, within February is kind of the game. Is that still the window of February for the yeah, Deerfield? Yeah, yeah. So Deerfield and Frontier are doing done at the same time <clears> um, and they kind of combine that project with the same vendor. So um, it'll be interesting to see what, we, what they're doing there, look what they have for that project. But one of the big issues was you don't put a key fob system on a damaged door. Right. You gotta build it, and so that was the holdup at Frontier for the last two years, because they put money about two years ago out of school committee, we had to repair all the doors, and it cost more to repair the doors than it was to put the key fob system in. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, so they gotta go repair all the doors, put new latching systems out, they just get hammered by 700 teenagers every day and right. so we had to put you know um, you know things there so the same kind of idea here is that we really should be looking at the multiple stages of the project and saying okay what are they going to then the other thing is you when you go to a key fob system is you reduce the number of doors that are exiting this building that are accessible by the staff so what goes to the playground what are the main entrances you know mm -hmm. a couple here here maybe one in the back and then you don't have nine entrances to a building that are entered you, know, you still have your exits, but you don't have those as entering day in, day out. Mm -hmm. So we have to kind of go through your map and see what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Look at the condition of those doors, upgrade those doors to be able to handle the key fob system, and then do the key fob system. And maybe that's a two to three year plan within that. You know, um, we have um, four access points in the building right now um, where staff punch in a code to get in. Um, the fifth access point would be the front door that does not have a code. So you're looking at a yeah. five, five point entry, that's yep. tough, but similar to yep. Deerfield six or seven, I think, but <coughs> And were any, any grants, so if not from the energy efficiency standpoint, what well, about from the security standpoint of there? Well, um, this year, uh, Chief Dimitropoulos um, applied for the, um, you know the safety grant, right? And, sure, right. and the town was awarded twenty thousand um, dollars, mm. and but you know we, we kind of earmarked different projects for that. So that that is something that you know we could try to pursue down the road also. But I think the limit may have been twenty thousand dollars per submission. Right. Yeah. Get us a doorway. 
Look at a hole, one hole, yep. Especially doors and especially hardware, commercial hardware like you have in school, crash fires and special engines and yeah. all of that. It's, it's really, really expensive. And then what we've been doing when we've been doing openings is we're trying to set them up so that they're going to function when we do the card access. So we're, yeah. we're putting in electric door latches and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Are either the classroom floor, I'm just looking at the ones here that are more than 10 grand mm -hmm. for the initial requirement, and you, the other ones you got are the classroom flooring, which does a section of the school, I guess one third of the school. Or yeah, that's an interesting. I, I guess I don't is, know. Is that a how long does how long does your replacement flooring last? I would say flooring mm -hmm. would be. I mean, to me, it's marginal as to whether that. Be that's. a five to seven year investment at least, mm -hmm. maybe yeah. a little longer. Yeah, so that's questionable. Uh, how about the? I mean, you've got grouped together here stuff on the oil tank. Um, the stuff in the oil tank is. is Definitely beyond that criteria. So, yeah, I, I would say the oil tank work would probably meet the definition of a capital expenditure. But it's actually not doing anything to the oil tank itself. It's just yeah, it's it's mostly trying to make sure that we don't have a problem. That's right. It's, it's repairs to to the tank filling and monitoring so that we're sure that we're doing a good job of. So. Do you have like a recommendation for what we want to send into the capital? Well, I, I think committee? that exterior siding project and the window project are, are, my experience would be that you probably wouldn't get more than those two projects funded if you did. So I, I think those would be a good place to you start. Know, a comment was made at a couple meetings back on the capital planning one about the windows and when the school was rebuilt after the roof fell in that the windows on one side were replaced, but on the other side they weren't deemed to That's be correct. bad enough yeah, off to need replacement. The windows that I'm talking about are just one side of the building. That's absolutely correct. And so, but I'm just saying there's already awareness that the windows have, mm -hmm. on half the building have been there for a long time. Yep. Okay. So that's probably a real good project. So I would think, I mean, at some point I guess we're going to need to vote on something, but I would think that um, putting in something on the windows putting something in on the siding, and I would even, I, it can't hurt to put in another one, because there were some departments putting in three, four, five things, and it doesn't mean, you, you know, there's no, there's no reason you're going to get them all, but you're certainly going to get something, and, um, you know, I would think the stuff to dealing with the oil tank is, is um, you know, also worth uh, getting on the table. What, I'm, what I may do if I do the oil tank is there's a couple of projects in the boiler room that right all kind of would fold in nicely. Yeah. And so what I'll try to do is put a project together that meets the definition of capital projects and takes care of as much of those as we can. It has the boiler that we were waiting on insurance okay? What's the status of that? The the last time the the insurance adjuster was out here two or three weeks ago, he assured me that it was going to get approved. So I went ahead and told the vendor um, to go ahead and order that boiler section. Um, I've been back and forth with with the town about the best way to do the purchase order and how to pay for it and they're saying that they haven't got the check yet, but it, it's all coming together really quickly. And that includes the pump for the thermal yes. shock. So we got that all wrapped into one yes. and all for a thousand bucks, basically. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of projects that are hopefully gonna happen either over break or right after break. The contractor, the same guy is doing most of these and he's got a lot going on that week but we're going to redo the oil lines, we're going to repair the tank gauge, we're going to put a exhaust fan in the gym storage room that right. caused us some heartache with the uh, air quality. Um, we're going to fix that boiler section and we're going to add that recirculating pump. It's going to be a busy that's January. Oh, that's terrific, though. <laughs> so, Mr. Chairman, I mean, should be, I, I guess I should make a motion to 
Add um, those three. Add those three items. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, you go ahead and submit those to the town uh, by the date in early January that is needed. And then, um, you know, I'll follow up with the committee, but I would imagine there would be a time in February or March that your attendance at a meeting to answer questions, explain these things would be useful like we did last year. Because that made a big difference. Yeah. You know, showing up Absolutely. showing up there really, really made a difference. So we'll see what we can get. Second. Second. Yeah. Mm. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> I just wanted to, the only thing I just wanted to comment was on the Roy, whatever's last name, the architect there. Right. Just, just very interestingly that with the priorities we had versus the priorities he had and what weren't even on the list. Mm -hmm. Just, I just want to, for you to know, when people come, you know, if you're another, as town members, you know, they're thinking of people saying, what about that thing? It's just, it's, it's just interesting that two different people are looking at the same thing and coming up with different priority levels. Um, you know, and, and some of them, some of them as we, you know, Bob explained to me, make that yeah, makes sense that we could address that. Other ones were, um, you know, talking about raising the um, raise the pavers at, w at one inch in front of the entrance. Well, they're not pavers; it's stamped cement, and we're not going to be raising that an inch anytime soon. <laughs> um, you know, stuff like you know. So some of them don't make complete sense in, within their list, and then as you know, in, in, in also within this list, you ben, ben has had feedback too, Bob, about what our priorities right. as you look through and say, well, you know. You know, sometimes you look through and, and the public may say something about oh, blinds, you you know, why do you need to upgrade blinds? And Ben will tell you that that's a priority in some of the classroom. If you have a, a nap time and you don't have, you can't make the room dark or you can't, you know, safety reasons if you're on the front side of the, you know, those kind of things. So just, you know, yeah. there's, there's, there's reasons and thoughts and there's conversations behind yeah. this. Well, there are other stuff here we get done through operating budgets or is there not really money to do any of this? You, you know, usually the, the, these kinds of projects either get funded as a capital project or they get toward the end of the budget year i start looking at what's available and i'll do a little extra and then usually with the business manager we'll look at the entire school budget and if there's additional money available somewhere and there's support from this group these are in my mind, these are really good projects. All of the schools have the same problem with these kind of mid-range projects, mm -hmm. is a lot of them don't meet the criteria for capital projects. Right, right. But if you add them all up, they're huge amounts of money that are very difficult to cope with through yeah. other, through the operating budget and that sort of thing. And I think, I think you hit that in the head, Bob, it's the same problem we're having a, within the Frontiers Capital, the bigger capital improvement plan that they're trying to put together is that there's just this long litany of small items that you could call deferred maintenance or you know certain things or just wear and tear on a 20 year old building it's a lot of two thousand dollar items you know what i mean they just kind of add up and you can't address that many in a single budget year without expanding a budget and, and you know we have all the other kind of things that you know strains on the budget so maybe we have to start bringing you know i don't know as peter mentioned earlier kind of maybe we gotta start grouping a fruit together that you know, call this a safety list or this, where we can mm -hmm. kind of do that kind of a thing. I don't know how the towns are going to feel about that. But this is a really good list, okay, because mm -hmm. I've talked to people in town hall about, you know, making sure we understand what is getting done, okay, because, you know, it's one thing to say, well, there's a lot of deferred maintenance you haven't dealt with, but you can also say, oh, hold it, we are, there's just a whole lot, but we are making progress, yeah. Yeah. okay, and it's clear to me we're making progress and there's a long ways to go, but you know, you'd rather be, at least we're making progress. Yeah. And it's also that this is to help you guys, because after a while, they start to blend into one project and the other. Did exactly. we just repair that boiler or that kind of thing or that pipe? Yep. And you exactly. can go back to that list Thank and you. say, oh yeah, we did. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Bob. <coughs> so the- We burned, we burned up most of our time here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Thank you. What's the hard stop? Uh, 15 minutes. That's when Darius has to leave. That's when Darius has to leave. Right. Very good. Mm. I so. Understood. We got girls varsity at 7.30, I'm just saying.
<laughs> we're all school aid. Did I maybe that kind of? Thing? <laughs> uh, rural school aid. Rural school aid. So I right now we uh, we're given a packet by the state that we have to fill out um, up to five pages explaining how we're going to use this the four thousand dollars to help um, uh, regionalize. Uh, regionalize and um, you know somehow create efficiencies. So. Um, we're typing that up. Spent and the first thousand on the report. The first thousand on the administrative <laughs> cost to get the report done. But um, it's actually um, I actually saw the draft of it today because so Louise Law is working on that um, for me um, because the, some of the money is being used as part of the efforts between the different schools, and so mm -hmm. um, that's kind of why we geared it that way. But um, so that should be submitted. The deadline to submit it is February first. So hopefully, if we submit it earlier, we get the money earlier. But we'll see where that, that comes out. But I just, I was thinking after that, I can't remember if we said that the money is going to be used. I, I, I would hope the money is not being used to start up something that's then going to have reoccurring obligations no. in future years. We're, we're you, you. Sorry, I, we, and that's we all. Bought, we bought social studies curriculum that we were already planning on buying, so we're cool. going to be able to shift the budget to Excellent. just pay for that. Great. Um, they were buying across the district, so. Great. And, yep. and be, Thank you. Or a portion of that. There'll still be a, a thousand or a half left, I think, or something else. Capital project recommendations. We've done that. Yep, mm -hmm. that's why. Feel, feels done. Update on security system. The uh, final quote that we signed off of um, for the security camera system was eighteen thousand seven hundred two dollars fifty eight cents. Uh, this was a capital project we put in uh, last spring and we were given fifteen thousand five hundred dollars so the difference will be um made up in the safety grant um that uh chief Dimitropoulos and i worked on together um so now the next step is um scott paul our director of technology will um schedule is scheduling the um installation we are uh pricing out additional go bags so that we um, have them in all of the learning space, have the go bags in all of the learning spaces throughout the building. And after that is priced out, we submit the bill to um, Chief Dimitropoulos, he'll order it. And then he has a couple projects, safety projects at the um, public safety complex and as well. And then we'll figure out how much money is left over. Um, we will at least be able to cover the um, $3,202 difference between the final quote and what we um, applied for for the capital project. Outstanding. I got to talk to you about whether the, the, the water heater one came in 475 over what we were allocated. Can we take another 475 out of the safety grant or is that not going to happen? Um, I don't know if that would qualify as a safety. No, he's talking about adjusting, adjusting, adjusting the amount from the safety grant to the safety items in the school so we, by five hundred, and then shift that money to. So the basically, board. take the same amount. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Take take more of the town's money to pay for an extra four seventy five of the town capital money to pay the full cost of the water heater. Okay, and have therefore 475 less to the security stuff and make that up from the security grant. Yeah, that seems like it would make sense. Is that doable, do you think? Sure. I mean, is there enough money in the grant, do you think? Yeah, we'll have to find it. Oh, there's def absolutely enough money in the okay. grant. Okay, well then I think we should try and pursue it that way. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. You guys gotta Set. go, right? No, I'm, I'm sending Judy up first and then you okay. can get started yeah. with that. Send me an email about that and we can. We'll do. Yeah. We'll do. Yeah. I said, yeah. School lunch financials. School lunch financials. That was part of your packet that went out. Um, <laughs> and let me remind myself where we're at with the. So we look good. We're in good shape because most of the schools are in good shape. Just want to get the exact. So. Oh, that's because it, it's in her packet. <clears throat> Here we go. All right. Um, 
So at the end of November, we are um, we are up 1,600, um, which is in a good place. Sales are good. Um, are you guys? I don't have my notes in front of me on that. Have you um, got the online system up yet? It's up and running. Letters were sent home to families this week, today, yes. yesterday. I think last week we did. Last week, yeah. So the online paying system is in place, or cool. is being pushed out there, and that'll, that'll help us with collection, and um, it's also a, a convenience, fee. there's a convenience for the families, there's also a small fee attached to it, so they can still do the traditional way of bringing in a check, or if they want to just go online and they pay the, the service fee, I think it's a buck, buck and a half, but, you know, for each time you do a transaction on there, they get a, they get a service fee. Um, I know I do it with my kids at my kids school and it sends you an email reminding your funds are low and it's just one of those things where it's one less headache you have to deal with but you have to pay the small fee some families will enjoy it others may not but it, it's one thing that's it's certainly part, part of the school lunch um, debt right now is coming from um, some families that moved out of town and no longer go to school here um, so just something to be aware of Probably not going to be yeah. yeah, I mean that's a that's a real factor in the sense that there's all there's not say there's always, but there's there there are fees that we will not fees, but uh, yeah. lunch yeah. revenues that we may never collect on ones that go overdue. They get high enough, you know. There's talk about using collectors, but um, your school's in a tough position because you're not going to have a kid go hungry either. Right. So, yeah. Um, yeah. That's where we're at. Okay. New 2020 fiscal year 20 budget. Yep. So part of your packet, you should we should have um, kind of the outline for what the uh, budget calendar looks like, so that you can kind of project ahead of what that uh, what's coming. You know, we're right now preparing the budget to be looked at. Um, you know, by this committee at the. January 15th meeting will be the kind of the first go around. Now remember when we go into January, it's the change of time when we're meeting. You have a whole night, you have one meeting that day. Um, well, only one school can meet that day um, for, um, for January, February, and March. So, you know, we're gonna be putting that together. We'll have some general, by the 15th, we may have the governor's budget. It's just about that time it'll come out. It's kind of very hard, we'll at least have um, you know, Ben's putting together the general um, needs base that we're going to have and building off of this year's budget, um, you know, moving forward even at um, level funding and whatever additional programs we have to operate um, is, you know, you know that we may have to expand the kindergarten class to two classes next year. And Ben, we'll go through all that at the next budget meeting, but mm -hmm. I'll kind of lay that out. Maybe we'll have the governor's budget by then to have some idea of where we're heading. Um, and then you know, house, house two comes out a little bit um, later than that. So that's kind of the time frame as we go through each one of these. Any chance we can get the uh, email the day or something in advance? Yeah. I mean, I love it when we get the you know, stuff where I don't have to spend the meeting trying to go through a spreadsheet or something like mm -hmm. that. And then obviously if we have problems in there, we have to have other meetings, we'll have other meetings. Or, I don't know the history of Sunderland's budget development as the elementary school, so, but. Indeed. All right. Usually we're able to do it in the regular. Do you want to, do you have to go or do you want to give me a report? No, I can give my report. Is there any other rules we have a country or two budget time? We can move stuff around a little bit to yeah. accommodate the schedule. Um, just an FYI, there's <laughs> moving forward, there's the executive session is on the agenda. So anytime we want to go into executive session to discuss how negotiations are going, they'll be on there moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, right now we've only done the meet and greet. So that's actually part of my um, my superintendent's report that was part of the packet. Um, so we're just in the meet and greet, and so we're you know, setting up for the next meeting. I think it's, it's, I'll be honest with you, I don't have the top of my head. It's mid-January. 
So um, I'm going to get started there. If we ever want to do a check-in or, or that kind of thing, that will be on all the agendas moving forward during negotiations. 31st. What's that? 31st? 31st. 31st. And we have a, we have a meeting prior to that to do more strategy. It's like the 15th or something like that. 23rd. All right. Um, so that's where we are there. Um, the sale of Christian Lane and the file storage update, um, it's being, our files are being moved tomorrow. So a uh, big exciting day. Um, being moved out of there and I'm in contact with the buyer of Christian Lane to move forward because it's a multi-deal with the town. Um, you know, he's got to work with both sides to get a, everything kind of lined up as once. Um, I talked about collective bargaining. Um, I posted the business manager position, uh, the contracted position for the second half of the year because the bids had to go out. So bids will be open on Friday. Um, we've had a few people take out the bids, so we'll see what happens, but that's for the second half of this year. At the, just to kind of keep you all up to date, at the January 22nd meeting, we have to make a decision whether or not um, we are going to look for another business manager. That's on the agenda and the superintendent being interim, that's on the agenda. Um, as well, so that's you know just a reminder to Mark Econ for the 22nd meeting. That's what's happening there. Um, the chairs are getting together. My understanding to have a discussion to develop an agenda for that meeting, so they have some kind of idea of what they're doing there. So talk to your chair if you have concerns or ideas regarding that. Um, <clears throat> I gave this the superintendent academic excellence award to Miss Emily Laws, um, and she'll be recognized at the Front Next Frontier meeting. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I attached two letters that were sent to the commissioner, um, both one from the collaborative and one from the town of Conway. And I just thought, um, you know, it was interesting that the town of Conway took a, um, uh, took a stand to, um, you know, to bring uh, attention to the expansion of the Chinese Immersion School. But I thought the collaborative letter has a lot of information in there <clears throat> that can bring people up to speed. If you're not up to speed, of you know what the concerns are and there was a if you saw there gazette we we submitted a, a, a statement as well in the editorial i think it was a couple days ago um as well um just just in the concerns it's not the it's not the mission of the charter school it's the funding formula and how um, it's, it's, it's pitting schools against each other and that's not where we want to be so we're hoping they recognize that that is my overall if there's Anything else in there? Questions on that list? Uh, are we going to, at the joint meeting on the 27th, um, we're making some decisions supposedly about your situation? Correct. Correct. So um, my contract says for the interim is that you'll let me know by the end of January whether or not you're going to open it up um, and what the process is going to be moving so forward. So we should be prepared to come there and argue whatever case we want to make without, but in fact there's been no sort of interim evaluation process or anything like that. I think that was that talked was about at some point, but right. it sort of never seems to have. And that was, yeah, it was discussed without um, at the last joint meeting in February, October, October. Um, October. yeah, was, um, you know, what would they want to prepare before that? I was told to give a a list of everything I'm working on and what I'm doing. So, okay. you know, um, again, the chairs can do something prior to the meeting. And I think that's, you know, where they have to come up with, uh, we have no, there's not a formal system that's been used over and over again in this kind of thing. And so the idea of the chairs coming together and deciding how they want to move forward after that is kind of where we're at. I mean, I'll just say here that I've been uh, very pleased with the work you've done. Thank you. And uh, you're, you obviously have the knowledge of the district uh, from all your time at Frontier uh, and so on, but you've been uh, uh, you've been responsive to to anything that I've seen that this school is needed and responsive in a sometimes you know smart and imaginative way. So uh, yeah, I've been very very pleased, and, and so I uh, you know I hope that the joint committee um, perhaps feels the same way, and we can just you know plan on having you here for. You know, a long time to come, but that remains to be seen. Yeah, I appreciate it. I also understand it's a process, so right. I'll let them do right. that process. And right. I, you know, I have to say all that, but I appreciate it. Okay. <clears throat> um, 
Yeah, so that's that's on the agenda there. And then the other thing, is, the other big thing is whether or not we will go with toward the um, posting a business manager position or not. And so I will I will present information at that time um, as well with where my opinion is things should go. And then, you know, again, if the school can make a decision on how they want to move on. Is Judy... Um, Judy, if you don't know, if they didn't recognize the name, she was once principal at Sunderland Elementary. There you and go. I was going to, I was going to bring that up. Okay. I was going to bring that up, but I want to uh, embarrass not, her car on right. the spot. But that was, um, that was before or during the building project. That was. She was before Martha Marty Barrett. Eighty nine to ninety one. Okay. Huh? Okay. So yeah. around there, but um, and she's also a former superintendent. So um, the nice part of that, she has attention to detail. Um, and so her and Mark are working together now. Okay. And so it's kind of the, there's a good balance of the, okay. there. Um, I also appreciate the fact that when I say, this is what I'm stressing about, she understands. She goes, yes, I understand what you're worried about there. And this is where, you know, so okay. having a superintendent expert. So okay. I'm hoping that, um, you yeah, know, we'll see continued improvement on, on that kind of thing as things are going to start getting very, we'll very much know how things are going when we start going into this budget season. <laughs> you know, we're you know, weeks away from, I yeah. would say, we're already in the, Mm -hmm. uh, it's in the principal's hands right now, kind of looking at what they have, and they're going to come back and build it from there. Um, and we'll see how that process works out. It's a little different. It's a, I don't want to say a little different. It's a lot different than how it was done in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot more, um, mm -hmm. there's a lot more responsibility on the principals, um, and I would even say the superintendent. Mm -hmm. um, then, you know, Patty did a lot of that, a lot of that groundwork. Um, mm -hmm. And there's, yeah. there's positive and negatives on right, both right, sides right. of that. There's yeah. some side that, you know, Ben's having to take on it's a little bit extra and some extra worries that he hasn't had in the past, but at the same time, he also is, Ben's in a good spot because he's a veteran in the building, so he kind of knows where some of the things are. It's, you know, it's more of a difficulty right. when they've got some rookie and principles out there as well. <clears throat> the, um, maybe some of the, like, prioritization in some sense coming from, you know, the person at the, you know, at the point of... <laughs> The action, so um, yeah, there's pluses and yeah. minuses. And, yeah. Yep, so we're right. working through that. Outstanding. Thank you. Thanks, man, for trading. Go. What's that? Thanks for trading with me. No problem. Thanks. Yeah. All right, thank you. Yeah, if anything comes up, shoot me an email. Give me a call. Thank you. Capital project reports is listed, but I feel like we've, we've gone done, over we've those. We've done all that. Yeah, it's in three different places. Yep. Um, committees. I mean, right now there's the negotiating stuff, and that's again under executive order. Mm -hmm. But all we can say we, we've done the meet and greet. Anyone else? We haven't met again. The council hasn't met again. So. Okay. January we meet. And collaborative? I, no, I'm not doing. Someone else is doing the collaborative. Yeah, I. The la I, I missed the last one, which was I think, before our last meeting. And I think the next one is, I don't know what the next one is. So no report. But, but no report. No report. Okay. So. Okay. Ben? Uh, principals report on Friday, December, December 6th, we had the annual Barnes and Noble Book Fair, uh, which serves as a fundraiser for our school library. This is organized by our library media specialist, Rachel Kidder, each year. Um, it featured the reading of the Polar Express, arts and craft, and songs. Um, there was an article in the Greenfield Recorder recently that I included in your packets. Um, SES gets adaptive tricycle. Um, during the 2017-18 academic year, we started a Donors Choose campaign to raise um, money for an adapted bicycle for students in our school who need that support. Um, we raised approximately $2,000 and the bicycle arrived this fall. Uh, Jessica Callahan, an instructional assistant here at SES, was really the, the driving force behind making this happen. So, um, you know, now uh, upon exiting classrooms, you have to look both ways as the uh, bicycle mm -hmm. is traveling down the hallways. But also, you know, we have our uh, walk and roll to school event, um, both in the fall and the spring. And, and so now some students who um, 
were unable to participate in the rolling piece will be able to do so in all future events, which is pretty exciting. Today we had our uh, winter concert, which featured uh, general music chorus, uh, the band and strings programs. Um, this was put on by our music department teachers, Susan Matsui, Megan Carr, and Mary Jo Cheryl. And uh, it's always a great uh, performance for our families and students. Upcoming uh, important, important dates. Next week is holiday break. And on uh, January 1st is the annual Snowflake Skate, which uh, takes place at the UMass Mullen Center practice rink. Um, and that's on from two to four, and it's a fundraiser for our sixth grade families. On January 14th, we have uh, King Arthur Baking, where for grades four through six, and um, uh, representatives from King Arthur will come in and do a baking demonstration for students in those grades. And the idea is that uh, students will go home and uh, bake a loaf of bread, which will then be donated to local food pantries um, brought back in. January 16th, we have a, the Courtney Campbell Assembly. She's a musician, storyteller, and artist that was here at SES years ago. And in fact, she's going to be performing at each of the elementary schools in the district that week. And then uh, we have our next um, parent coffee scheduled for January 30th from 8.30 to 9.30. Um, and that will once again um, be geared towards uh, supporting kindergarten families. That's the report. Did you want to, could you, you had numbers for oh. the number of kids that are coming from the different so yeah, in, in today's Gazette, there was an article in, in the paper um, that uh, in 2020, the, is it Sugar Bush Apartments? Mm -hmm. Will yeah, will be completed on um, Plumtree Road. Uh, the apartments will feature 150 units and um, just to see what kind of impact that would have on our school. Um, of the five uh, apartment complexes already in town, we have a total of 400, uh, excuse me, 44 students uh, who attend SES. And, and to put things in perspective, Cliff, Cliffside, which has 279 units, uh, 17 students um, from Cliffside are enrolled at SES. So with 150, units going into this new complex, um, you know, it, it's not looking like we'll uh, receive a huge increase uh, in our student population, but you also never know. You don't know. Yeah. Um, so it's something to have on our radar. And this would impact the 2020-2021 school year. Correct. Um, and that's, that's if all the units were filled as soon as you know they cut the ribbon do you have the numbers for the other you had them I yeah think. uh lantern court has 10 squire village three how many you know how many units there are on each of those i, I do not okay. i can i can get us that information squire village three um sugarloaf estates 11 and pioneer valley apartments three okay did you see also in the paper there was a there's been a Someone, I think it was Lantern Court, a new owner. I did not see that. Um, I think it was Lantern Court. It was in the it was in the recorder in the last week, and I didn't. Uh, I'll see if I can find it at home and send it to you. Mm -hmm. And I, and the only reason I say that is, and it's it, you know, often things are just mm -hmm. wishful thinking, and they never come to pass. But sometimes if you don't try, you never you know you never know and. You've got obviously this whole Sugarbush Estates or whatever the proper name is coming in. Somebody spending a lot of money on that to do something in the town, and then you've got this guy who just bought. I think it's Lantern Court. Okay, spending a lot of money, and you know people one assumes they want to be good neighbors, and you know at some point making an approach for them first to help with the kindergarten with the uh, playground. Mm. You know, might I mean you don't know if you don't try. Yeah. Then they're not businesses like you think of businesses or banks or something that would normally be uh, the ones you would 
you would target, but geez, you know, they're putting a lot of money into this town. And you would think that, you know, something that would sort of like, yeah, hey, we, you know, we want to be good citizens. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's sort of like, okay, who's going to get to them first? And it might not be a bad idea to just say, here's a, you know, it'd be a significant way and it would make mm -hmm. a real mm -hmm. nice way to sort of come join our town. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's worth trying, you know, I think it's, it's it, I think it's clearly worth trying. Yeah. And the question would be, how do you approach them? When do you approach them? Who do you approach them with? You know, what sort of package do you, you know, throw at them? You know, that sort of stuff is, mm -hmm. needs to be thought about, but I hate to, you know, at least not make the effort. Sure. Because you don't know. Yeah. It's a good idea. You go, you know, I mean, you know, you can pick a number, but they might be willing to just, you know, because they're already spending a ton. Mm -hmm. Why not have something they can point right. to and say, yeah, we think it's important to, you know, be a member of this community. Yeah. So, okay, that's a good point. I'll, go, I'll see if I can get you that. Uh, okay. How are we doing, Mr. Chair? We're close. <sighs> you looking for one more motion? Yeah, well... Well, you got other stuff in your mind. It, it, I don't know. Maybe we're going to do it tonight. It occurs to me that at some point uh, it may make sense to have everyone cognizant at least of the negotiations. But maybe that's, uh, that's another evening. So uh, maybe we got to it. Doesn't, it doesn't sound like, from what was said, that there was. I mean, it seems like maybe at our next meeting that would be something that, yeah, okay, we and we're going to have as long as we want with them, mm -hmm. and yeah. we take the time at the end to say, okay, maybe we ought to just see what's going on in case we got any, you know, any Let's any complaints that. about it. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what's going on, but it seems like so far it isn't much in terms of something that we could. I, I can't you know, comment. Usefully. Uh, yeah. So I won't. So, uh, but I'm good with it. I'm, it'll, let's put it this way. It'll keep till then. So okay. I may okay. as well. Okay. But I think you're right. That it's good to, yeah. you know, just run stuff by us yeah. and see if anybody squawks. Yeah. yeah. And like Darius said, it'll, so it'll, it'll just be on the agenda, the uh, executive yep. session. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Motion right. to uh, adjourn. So moved. Yeah. I'll second that one. Sure. All right, all in favor? Yay. Okay.